situation where uh, any single riparian landowner could take the position successfully that you have to have that person's permission to float past that riparian property. It would just, it's just unimaginable that this state could be that way. But that's kind of what we were facing back in the early 80s. I mean, I, I grew up in Ennis. My father was a big fisherman. And we had an old army surplus yellow raft. And he taught me and my brother to pull it down the Madison while he fished. <laughs> and nobody ever thought, nobody ever thought that that was improper or that a single landowner could, could block access. But that's what we were coming to with Dennis and Michael Curran and the, and the Dearborn River and with Hildreth in the Beaverhead. And a good group primarily from Butte, Tony and uh, Tom Buny and Jerry Manley and uh, Daniels and others. Um, working in part with some dedicated fish, wildlife, and parks people, uh, decided that our Supreme Court at that time was right, this was in the early 80s, for getting something done so that we could establish the precedent, which we did. We formed the Montana Coalition for Stream Access. We proceeded to win. We got very good judges, Gordon Bennett on the Dearborn, and Jack Shamstrom on the, on the Beaverhead and proceeded to establish that very important precedent uh, on, based on the public trust doctrine of the Montana Constitution of the right to use uh, the waters of the state, the right of the public. A very, very important precedent. I don't need to tell anybody here that. Uh, but one which we've been pressed to make sure we preserve and implement. And that carries up to the current day, and I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, I've been able to pass the torch on to uh, some of the younger lawyers in my firm, uh, Devlin Geddes, who usually talks to you here, has been very active on the Ruby River, and that finally seems to be done with the last ruling on Sailor Lane.
but also I think in the governor's race. When I talked to a good source uh, in terms of the polling information during the uh, governor's race, and I was told that once the Gianforte stream access problem came out and surfaced, remember he was uh, having a little trouble with fish water in the parks, his numbers dropped 10%. And so I, I think what, what we've been able to do, this group and others, is to establish access and stream access and the sacrosanctity of the, the Montanans' right to float and use our streams for recreational purposes. That's now thoroughly embedded. We, we will have challenges like the Cox Kennedys because there are a lot of people with a lot of money who love to come to Montana and make their claims. But, but I think we've, we've basically uh, won our victory and it's now just a matter of fighting to protect it. And some of us are no longer here. I mean, I, when I grew up in Ennis, my father was a school superintendent, but he was also a long time head of the Madison Valley Rod Gun Club, and I remember my brother and I licking envelopes once he went to do the minutes and sent them out. And, and they were instrumental in getting uh, I th one of the accesses, I think it's up there on Mackety Bridge and the Wall Creek game range. So we have this tradition back even when Tony Shulman was a student at Western Montana <laughs> <laughs> of, of uh, working, you know, as for, for the interests of the general public on hunting, fishing, and recreational issues. And this is the group, I wish there were more young people here, frankly, including myself, I wish I were younger. <laughs> <laughs> but we're